Hello and welcome to this Car Design News webinar with me, Christopher Ludwig, Editor-in-Chief here at Car Design News and Ultima Media. The in-vehicle user experience is increasingly a defining aspect of automotive and mobility design. More vehicles are integrating large HMI screens, bringing together a complex mix of maps, media and services, and a brand's ability to curate a cohesive, simple, and yet highly interactive experience will increasingly be a differentiator. That's why we're so excited today to bring you this webinar, which will focus on the power of 3D rendering and mapping technology to unlock more HMI capabilities. Uh, recently, 3D content specialist Unity have partnered with location and data platform here technologies to develop next-gen embedded automotive HMI with RT3D rendering capabilities. It's a game-changing collaboration in the world of UX and UI design, and it opens up many new possibilities. And, and you're in for a real treat today as we're going to get a walkthrough of a, of a recent demo and also go into more detail on HMI design workflows. As you can see on the screen, we have, we'll be joined by a number of, of experts who will also be with us for Q&A, uh, who I'll shortly hand over for. We'll have Derek Burrows, Senior Product Manager at Unity, Michael Limber, Senior Design Manager at Here Technologies, Pedro Fabri, Designer at Here Technologies, and Brad Hunt, Lead Software Engineer at Here Technologies. Uh, they'll be joined on the panel at the end of the presentation, so please put through your, your questions in the chat feature, as long with any other issues you may have, uh, and we will address them. And of course, put the questions to our, our expert panelists. And there's also a number of other technical experts on hand, so really as technical a question as you need, put it through and our, and our, and our panel will engage with it. Uh, this webinar is also being recorded and will be available afterwards to view on demand if there's anything you wanna go back to and view. But now I'd like to hand over to Derek to, to kick us off with the presentation. Hi, Derek. Over to you. Thank you so much, Christopher. Appreciate it. And thank you, everyone, for being here. We really appreciate having you here today. We are so excited to share what we've been working on. Um, and I, I am going to take up a little bit of your time at the beginning and then hand it over to the here guys who will be walking us through the live demo and so much more good stuff. But we're going to start with uh, uh, setting the agenda for the day. Um, for background, here Technologies and Unity have been collaborating for over a year. We've been evaluating joint opportunities in several key location-based industries like automotive, simulation, AEC, and a few other areas. And as one of our first steps, we developed a proof of concept looking into the combined potential for here and Unity to enhance workflows for designers as they build next-generation automotive HMI experiences. We will be exploring that today. We'll start with the background that led us to the solution. So Michael, if you could switch to the next slide, please. Now, as the global leader in mapping and location services, I have no doubt that this audience has already heard of HERE. But for the uninitiated, HERE has a 30-year track record of best-in-class mapping technology. Today, their navigation services are installed in over 100 million cars, mapping over 200 countries worldwide. We are just incredibly excited to be working with them in transforming HMI experiences. The name you may be less familiar with in the automotive space is Unity. We are the world's leading platform for creating and operating interactive real-time 3D content. With 1.5 million monthly active creators, the ability to deploy games and experiences to a wide set of devices, including mobile, PC, console, mixed reality, and of course, embedded HMI systems, we are excited to help you guys understand how Unity can bring value to your organizations as well. Uh, next slide, please, Michael. <laughs> so for those of you who are familiar with the Unity name, you probably know that our roots are in gaming. Over half of video games on mobile, PC, and consoles combined are made with Unity. If you've ever played games like Call of Duty Mobile, Mario Kart Tour, Pokemon Go, which I'm sure we all had a great summer with at one point, Among Us, Fall Guys, or Beat Saber, you have interacted with a Unity creation. Next slide, please. But today, it's not just the largest gaming studios, but also Fortune 500 companies and global industry leaders that use Unity across their business for a competitive advantage. This includes the top 10 automotive OEMs, who all use Unity for a range of functions throughout the automotive lifecycle. Unity is the most popular way to create content for AR and VR applications. Customers like Toyota use it to power new ways to collaborate, like visualizing CFD data 
with the HoloLens. Lexus takes advantage of Unity's photorealistic rendering capabilities to generate marketing content faster and more affordably than traditional means, as you can see in the top right. BMW uses Unity to simulate driving scenarios. That accelerates its autonomous driving programs. And Volvo Cars uses Unity to improve their vehicle safety. They can test scenarios that look and feel real, like a moose running into the road without having to physically build anything. That's a huge time and cost saver when it comes to getting your new technologies out to market. But today we're talking about screens. So I'm gonna ask Michael, could you pull up the video please? The first little demo video that we have. And this is a sneak peek of what we'll be talking about today. Derek, you're, you're muted, Derek, just to remind you. Thank you for the tip. Um, so don't worry, there's no audio on this particular video. I'm going to be talking over the whole thing. Uh, the power of Unity comes in its extensibility. Unity is a development platform. It can be used however you see fit. More and more OEMs are finding value in using a real-time 3D gaming engine for their in-car experiences. A recent study found that Unity Technologies is among the most, HMI, no, most popular HMI development software. And that's a direct response to a changing market. As screens grow larger and become a fusion of media, maps, and data, teams need tools that empower them to modernize their user experiences. Using Unity, using real-time 3D, decades of innovation in gaming can now become part of your HMI design. You can create visually stunning, complex, interactive experiences in both two and three dimensions that surpass what traditional HMI tool chains are capable of. As you saw in this demo, you can showcase maps in 3D, toggle between day and night mode, and much more, all in support of creating a more dynamic experience for the driver and for your passengers that adjusts in real time. And we can pull back into the slides. Thank you, Michael. The power of Unity, oh, sorry, hang on. <laughs> While the output of uh, Unity is our stunning display experiences, we actually might have more of an impact in the input and the user workflows. We know that there can be some dreaded handoffs between design and developers that result in some design concepts being left on the cutting room floor. Unity can offer a much improved workflow where designers can bring their designs from the tools of their choice like Photoshop, Illustrator, Maya, and so on into Unity for interactive design. And then developers can use that same tool to develop those experiences and interaction and deploy those to the chipset of your choosing, avoiding the compatibility issues that typically arrive from traditional HMI tool chains. We want to provide a seamless end-to-end -end experience from UI UX design to developments with one tool. There's also a major workflow benefit here. That's what you see is what you get developments. With Unity's real-time 3D platform, gaming studios can preview how their game plays on their target platform in real time. And the same is true for embedded infotainment systems, helping you go from your design to your device or your screen without compromise. Unity offers industry-leading multi-platform support, as well as platform licensing to establish and maintain support for your preferred chipset target and operating system making us a, a, a partner with you as you bring your custom experiences to market. Next slide, please. Now, we recognize that today, Unity is not a tool that any designer can just pick up out of the box and use without expecting to do a little bit of programming to uh, learn the ropes of how to make the most of the tool. But as the HERE team will show you, the advantage of Unity is that it can be reconfigured in any way that you want. And as you can see here, they transformed Unity into a tool for their design team so they could design an immersive HMI design experience without needing to know how to code in Unity or know all the intricacies of the program. Now, we are working on making the experience of using Unity even easier for HMI designers, so stay tuned for more to come there. But without further ado, let's check out what HERE's team has made with Unity. I will hand it over to Michael Limber, and we'll start off with a little video.
And please welcome Michael Limber, the Senior Design Manager of the 3D Concepts and Prototyping team at HERE. Michael, if you are speaking or joining us on video, we can't hear you yet. I'm sorry, the mute button is always my challenge. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> and thanks, thanks, Derek, for the handoff. And um, thank you very much for everyone attending. Um, we're going to start off the uh, this, this section here with uh, some discussion of what, what we think is the industry context, some challenges, and some opportunities. And uh, you can see how we got to the solution that we um, that we first you know we came to. So um, we consider that for OEMs, UX is brand, and that uh, that they're under increasing pressure to kind of differentiate the brands while retaining the design control of the in-vehicle user experience. Um, and so HMI displays, as we all know, are becoming increasingly a large part of the UX, uh, and there's also an increasing number of them in the vehicle. So they're displaying big complex fusion of different uh, media types, maps, and uh, media controls. And um, so this integrated HMI experiences are becoming a big, a significant component of the in-vehicle user experience. Uh, and of course, <clears throat> these, these experiences are moving way beyond the A to B traditional A to B uh, map guidance. So we, you know, future systems have to take into account a bunch of new concepts uh, like situational awareness or contextual maps, a shared dialogue control, as well as integrating all the media and control interactions. So it's a much more difficult design environment to uh, to play in, and it's it's a lot more challenging given the, the various systems that are in place in vehicles today. Uh, the current HMI design workflows in some places um, have a lot of friction and pain, pain points. There's a lot of generic design tools that are being used. Uh, it's slow to implement and iterate, uh, and sometimes indirect you know, communication channels uh, can get in the way of a kind of smooth design-driven workflow. Um, and we also think that specialized design tools can reduce time and cost. Um, as these screens multiply and the sensors multiply in the vehicles, uh, integrating the user experience is a lot more complex to achieve. Um, and so specialized design tools, the, be the best part is that they shorten design cycle times and they reduce costs. Michael, I don't mean to interrupt here, but would you mind Please. turning on your webcam as well? Sure, no problem. I'm sorry. But, uh... Be nice to see your beautiful face. Yeah, exactly. That's me. <laughs> um, there you go. Um, I'm here. Love it. Hey, everybody. <laughs> um, and uh, so uh, some, other, some other points to make is that we believe that design often drives requirements for product innovation and that designers are coming up with new ideas and often things that no one thought of before. Um, and so to implement these, we want to offer design users a familiar, powerful, and easy to use tool set where they can explore and experiment and iterate on their own. Um, you know, the idea is that that uh, a lot of there's a lot of design talent expertise in the industry today that um, uses the, their current workflow and that any new tools we thought should be familiar in feel and, and workflow to those tools. So um, we think they can generate a lot more novel solutions a lot more quickly if we do that. Um, and also working on target hardware is obviously key. Uh, and so we want to start working on target hardware as early in the process as possible. So from your initial concepts, you should be able to place those in, in, in a layout somewhere. Uh, and then actually eventually those mock those concepts become mock-ups and final designs. And they should always appear and on the target uh, display devices. Um, and the question comes up, aren't there already a lot of dedicated HMI design applications? And there are definitely a few, and they're very established, and they've gone through the hard part of actually integrating with real design environments in OEMs. But none of them to date feature um, a, a automotive-grade map, you know, a, a full platform, map platform, uh, combined with the power of a advanced 3D game engine like Unity. Um, and then and both of those things combined exposed to a very simple and design focused uh, UI and workflow. Um, and then our goal really is this sort of seamless evolution from initial prototypes to final production. And part of that's achieved by, by working on the native displays and otherwise that all the tools from, the, the, the tool would be used at the beginning all the way through final production. So. Uh, we want a rapid and agile collaboration between design and engineering, and we also want designers to have a kind of a no-code workflow so they can play and invent new uh, new technologies. So with all that in mind, um, our 
our goals for this this uh, HMI design workflow prototype was to re reimagine the HMI design workflow in UX towards maximizing the creative potential of OEM design teams. And that last bit's the most important. We think there's a lot of untapped potential in there given the current, current workflows. Uh, we also want to show the benefits of combining here's location data and services and the Unity game engine. Um, we're really targeting this, this sort of what you see is what you get no code application and it's geared for you know design users. Um, we also want to present it a minimal like clutter-free UI. A lot of tools have lots of power but they, they have a lot of things on screen at once and we were trying very much to kind of minimize how, how little could we uh, could we show and still give you maximum control for iteration. And then the last thing was to demonstrate the prototype running on target hardware to prove its performance using Unity. Um, and that's the, the, the main point of this. The big benefit for us was that we could build this with and in Unity. Um, you know, I, we think that this, this is such an important field that HMI designers deserve their own tools. Um, and HMI design is critical and complex and uh, our solution you know, offers this very simplified and clutter-free design uh, focused UI. And uh, what's great about Unity is that makes, Unity makes that possible to not only use Unity for the rendering of the application, but actually to build the application. So here's an example of the, uh, the prototypes UI within the Unity UI. Um, and this combination of a map and, and game engine is, is an amazing combination because rather than having 10 or 15 different pieces of software that you use, pretty much with the location platform and the game engine Unity uh, together, uh, we create this very, very sort of seamless uh, and flexible uh, you know, power that we can use to do HMI design. And the other great thing is that Unity is a real-time game engine. So can you imagine the possibilities uh, for, for uh, automotive infotainment? Um, apart from the UI development, Unity brings the full power and features of the high-end video games. Uh, and so we look forward, we, we barely touched, scrapped the surface of this in this prototype of all the special effects and, and uh, features that could be brought to bear. So it's great to have all that power. Most dedicated uh, UI tools don't really have um, the things that a Unity game engine can bring to the table. And so with that, I'd like to go into a little bit of the, um, the breakdown of how we simplified the whole process. And so basically, um, the architecture of the thing is that that we have a, a concept of a project um, and a projects have a layout and a layout is kind of a collection of different things um, and those those elements can be grouped together and so you would build uh, individual groups and they can be nested and layered and transformed uh, independently so these these groups can be laid out up here in, in the layout um, elements can be anything it can be bitmaps, graphics, buttons, maps, prefabs, masks, you know, browsers, pretty much anything. Uh, and elements can all be ordered, uh, layered, transformed, and animated. And then, of course, elements each have properties, um, and those properties can also be animated or linked to dynamic inputs. And I think these two points deserve to be called out in that uh, the prefab is a concept in Unity where it's kind of an advanced component. You can put two or three things together, um, and expose a number of attributes that can be um, manipulated. And so th this brings, this is where the no code part comes in for the design users, where uh, prefabs are pre-created up, up front. You might have a speedometer prefab that, that has room for um, just the attributes the designer needs to, to hook up and to modify. Uh, and the same thing with dynamic inputs. We, in this demo, use a lot of sort of cache data but there's no reason that any of these things, uh, animation channels, couldn't actually be tied to a dynamic input from the vehicle itself. Um, and as you can see, we sort of broke this down. Here's a project panel. We could have had a large tree, a single you know, tree hierarchy, uh, but we split it up into several panels just to simplify the, um, the, the user from having to scroll up and down this big long tree to get to these small attributes. So you basically have a project with a number of layouts, um, the layout may include all these elements that are on the screen right now, and any one element would have its properties. Um, we also have a library where you can drag and drop these elements into the scene. Some of these mm -hmm. could be just a simple bitmap, um, and others, you know, might be a prefab that has a, a more complex behavior that you can access. Um, we also have a, um, a timeline. So this is a very traditional sort of um, structure that we think the whole UI is quite 
uh, people are familiar with this as sort of an After Effects or you know Premiere type timeline. Um, and uh, with this, you can animate properties or link properties to dynamic features within the scene. Um, we also had to play, besides the navigation experience, we uh, mocked up a sort of media experience. Um, and the, the beautiful thing about this is that's, that we can make these just a, just a bank of an image that someone made in Photoshop or actually make these individual buttons um, that you can actually trigger uh, different screens to transition or whatever have you. So we can really mock up the experience um, to, to you know, maximize exploring all the different things. These items could be just a simple image uh, that you have, or it could be an actual implementation of the, uh, of the media switching itself. Um, and as well, we wanted to try out a couple of different uh, styles with this because the point is not just to do one single custom uh, UI. So here's kind of a modern look, but we also uh, spent some time and <clears throat> mocked up a more classic uh, sort of separate cluster versus uh, media, you know, map screen uh, mode. So the, both all these things were done with um, with the uh, with this tool that we created. So the point of this is that um, you can drag and drop in a map, you can drag and drop in points of interest, you can set up uh, renderings of all these elements, um, and all of this can be tied together and dynamically linked. And so we'd like to show you a little more of a demonstration right now of the actual uh, prototype uh, running uh, so I'm going to hand off the screen to Pedro, uh, and he's going to take us through uh, a demo of uh, a live <clears throat> section with Unity. Okay, hopefully you guys can see my screen right now. And I think by now we're already familiar with the interface. So pretty much up here in this up portion, uh, we have the layout display where we can actually see the pieces they're putting together works kind of like a canvas or an artboard in Photoshop or Illustrator. Uh, and it, everything starts here in the library, of course. We can simply uh, just go down here. I'm gonna expand this classic cluster and engages. Uh, so here, uh, pretty much I created all these assets using tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, and I saved them inside this uh, library that I uh, needed no uh, development support at all to do this. and uh, for us to drag and drop pieces inside the layout, we can just simply just click and drag them in the layout. Here you guys can see you have an speedometer. I'll do the same with the tachometer. So we have both here, pretty handy. As you guys can see, they all uh, create uh, groups by default. As we see here, I'm gonna drag them inside the same group. I'll select the group and delete it. Uh, so as you select the uh, elements here on the layout panel, we have the properties exposed here. For PNG images and 2D assets in general, we have the placement properties, as you guys can see, pretty standard, right? You can move them around either clicking here or just drag left and right to move them around. We have a scale, rotation, and I have the color properties. Just gonna show you guys how it works. I know it doesn't make sense for this demonstration, but if I force saturation, uh, it adds color to the elements that we just added, and then you can change the hue to whatever you want. Again, doesn't make sense for this purpose, but just so you guys can get the idea. So I'll bring saturation down to zero again. And then the next thing I wanna show is how to get these pieces animated. So we switch to the timeline tab. I can move it around here in the cursors pretty easily, just dragging left and right. Uh, I can move to anywhere I want in the timeline. I'll select the asset, let's say the speedometer. And I'll do some simple animation just so you guys can get the idea. So I'll select the property that I want to animate. I'll click on this plus sign. And it adds a tween, uh, which is a short for in-betweening. If you're familiar with animation, it, it's actually adding two keyframes for me, one in the beginning, one at the end. And what's registered, it's the interpolation between those two keyframes. So the action that happens between them, that's what we, we want to deal with. Uh, so I've just added a uh, position X uh, twin animation for the speedometer. I'll move it to the second keyframe. I'll move it to the side a little bit and I'll add a second keyframe. And let's say that for the tachometer, I'll do the same, but with the opacity. So I'll be adding a twin animation for the opacity. We can move it around as you guys can see, you can uh, drag and drop the, uh, the, the keyframes and then I'll select the second one and I'll say that the tachometer will disappear for this keyframe and then I'll hit another keyframe. Oops, we don't want this guy. We want this one here. Should be set to zero. 
Awesome. So if I rewind and hit play, we're going to be able to see that this disappearing. As you see, some of the tools are still a little bit rough. They're still working on them. This is currently being done. So there you go. That, that's the animation being done. Super simple. Just wanted to prove a point there, you guys, that I was able to animate and bring the assets inside the tool. Uh, we can use this as placeholders, and then later on, you can bring the pieces and parts that put this uh, uh, tachometer and the speedometer together. That's what I'm actually going to show you guys right now. So, uh, so I'll select this group. I'll delete it. And then the next thing I want to do, I want to combine another project that I've already set up to show you guys, which will be the classic dial. So as you can see, uh, this is a big feature already by itself. We're able to put things together and then we can save it as a project and then combine it later on with other things that we're creating. We'll give you an example of this in a bit, but this by itself is already super powerful. So let me hide this. Uh, group here and what i want to show although it looks like the same thing you guys just seen before but now i have all the pieces and parts here broken down so i have the needle gas display and it, as you can see we have some animation set for all of them so i'm going to switch to this sequence mode that's how we call it and you can see that it's uh, showing me all the properties that has animation from elements within the group that i have selected if it makes sense so if i just quickly rewind, I'll select the layout, so get rid of the bounding box, and then when I hit play, we can see kind of this exploded view animation going on. Uh, super handy, if you're familiar with animation, uh, you know this is uh, crucial for you to get the timing going, so we can drag these guys left and right to adjust timing. We have this uh, snap tool uh, feature that helps us snapping for every quarter of a second. Uh, just to make sure that if you want to like align keyframes to make sure they're all in the same line. So it's super, uh, super easy to do. So let me switch back to the default view. And then I'm, now I'm going to hide this group. You don't want to see this anymore. And I'm going to unhide this next one. Looks pretty much like the same one we've seen before. Only difference, is, as you can see, the needle is pointing up. And you'll understand in a bit why that's happening. Um, so next thing I want to show, I want to go to the library. And it goes out to prefabs. So these are the prefabs. If you're not familiar with prefabs, prefabs is a short for prefabricated. Um, the best way, the easy way to, to describe it, if you're not familiar with Unity, these are uh, special uh, assets that you can create that gives us a series of properties that are custom to that specific asset. Um, that's pre previously defined by designer and developer. And the tools, tools that are exposed here for you can be animated, can be adjusted and tweaked, and those belong to that specific asset. A easy way to compare to that is imagine like the text tool or the pen tool, or actually really any of those tools we have in Photoshop Illustrator. If you think about it, those tools are actually really complex. Like when we type text something, you can change the type font, you can change the style, you can add drop shadow, you can change the color. You can do lots of things with that. So it, that's kind of how it works here for us. Here in Unity, in the Unity world, uh, it's called uh, prefabs. So the one I want to show you guys is the situation awareness, which I'm sure you guys are familiar with. It's actually a combination with some of these prefabs. So as you guys can see here, we have rain, we have uh, POIs that are going to be covering in a bit, we have routes, we have the navigation, we can style the map, we have lighting. We can add movies. That, that's actually when Unity really comes into play even more. Uh, it's coming up with these prefabs that are super easy for designers. I'm not a coder myself, I, and I was able to implement all this uh, without uh, the support of a, of a developer. So the one I want to show you guys is the situation awareness. So let's go ahead and combine the situational awareness project, and I'll open it. Let's give it a second. It's going to load. Okay, so uh, so if I expand the situation awareness group, you guys can see that it's a combination of some of these prefabs that I have in the library. Just to make the demonstration easier, I just added them here, prepared, and then exported this as a project, and then I combine in this one here. So you can do that with pretty much everything. You can set, uh, work on the speedometer as a separate project, and then you bring that in in the main project. It's, uh, it's, it's super useful for sure for designers. So what do you want to do? Uh, so if you're asking yourself, this is San Francisco data, we are not seeing the buildings here because we opted to leave the buildings out of the situation awareness since that's not something that you usually see there because it can block corners and, and side streets. So when I hit play, let's rewind and hit play. 
you're going to see that the car is moving. And if you're asking yourself again why it's making a right, it's because we baked the route in San Francisco for the pur purpose of this prototype. Um, and th the first thing we want to do is so let's link the needle to the car velocity so you guys can see how easy it is. So I'll select the needle, I'll expand the property settings, and I'll go down here to topic and I'll link it to car velocity. There you go. So the needle is already reacting to whatever car velocity. Uh, the, the car is at at the moment, and I can do the same with the readout. That's a, so these are all separate prefabs. The needle is a prefab. If I scroll up here, you guys can see that I have the needle here, um, and I'll do the same to the readout, which is this mile per hour down here. So if I select the readout, I'll expand the settings, and I'll link topic to car velocity as well. There you go. So it's adjusting to the velocity. Uh, it's almost at the limit because it's 35 miles per hour, as you know. So so if I hit stop rewind and hit play again now it's all making sense you guys can see the blinker it's already set up by default just to make our life easier because it's supposed to be on anyways and uh showing a little bit of the situation awareness unfortunately you won't have time to go over everything there's lots of features here super handy for designers again i was able to set everything here with no development support after having these features uh fully integrated in the tool so uh the one i want to show is the camera uh we can play with the distance as you guys are seeing. We can pitch. There are lots of camera attributes here that you can play with. Set keyframes so you can fully customize your scene with no development support. Uh, so that's it for the camera. We can change the vehicle speed down here. You can see max speed 21 units. We can change it to more or less. Um, the next thing I want to show you guys is stops. So we can actually add stops. So that's when we start customizing our route. We can add stops to whatever intersections we want. So the way to do it, I'll show stops. You see this red diamond here. We can move it around along the route, or we can add more stops. So let me add a second one, and I'll move it a little bit ahead. I hope you guys can see it here. So the vehicle is going to be making two stops at this at this point. So if I rewind, hit play. Let's bring the camera closer a little bit. I'm doing this as we go live, as you guys see. And then when the vehicle gets to stop, it will make a full stop of think of two seconds. That's how we determine that as a representation that the vehicle would be stopping at an intersection. And we have lots of other features here. We have a radar, as you guys can see here. So we can add traffic to the uh, to the situation awareness. You, we, we can tune the traffic when the traffic is gonna show up on the screen. Uh, the radar is the radar that, that goes around the, the main vehicle here, of course, to detect nearby vehicles. We can play with the radar. There are ways to adjust it. We have this adaptive camera, which shows you how the camera is going to behave and the distance from the camera to the vehicle and the, the angle that the camera is going to be up and down based on the vehicle speed. So if I see down here, not going to spend too much time on this, but if you see far is set to five units, that, mean, that means that the camera is going to pull back five units from its default position based on the vehicle speed. So when the vehicle is beyond 20 units, it's going to get this far from the camera. This is not a tutorial. I'm not going to spend too much time on each feature because believe me, you guys are going to be bored. <laughs> so I'll try to make life a little easier here. So if I jump in here to a bigger number, so let's say... 105 and it's not pulling back too much because between those two stops the vehicle won't reach its full speed because it, the two stops are too close to each other but when we rewind we can see that the camera is close because the the vehicle is parked when it hit play the camera pulls back a bit as you guys can see due to that adjustment that i'm doing the adaptive camera super easy to do like i said i'm not a coder myself and i was able to set everything by myself brake lights work by default as you can tell so that's it. That that's the little bit that we want to show for the situation awareness. Regarding the map, we're going to see a little bit more of it uh, in the second portion of the demonstration. You guys get the idea. Okay, so let's move along to part two. I'll go to a brand new scene, as you guys see here. And the first first thing you want to do is I'm going to open a project, which is the navigation one. Let's give it a second. It's going to load. It's bringing up the map for us. Um, again, this is San Francisco. Uh, this is actually here, product here, premier to the cities. Um, let me, we have this actually, this great tool here. It's a, it's a camera free tool that allows us to move around on the map. So I have full control. This is, like I said, the here 
uh, the here maps. This is San Francisco. I don't know if you're familiar with the city, the Quai Tower. And we have these landmarks, so-called landmarks, which are the, 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 you know what I mean? Landmarks, I think everyone here is familiar with, which is kind of these pinpoints in the city, the familiar buildings that we have there to use as a reference. So let me pull back again to the default position. And like I said, the route is a baked route in San Francisco. And now that, that's really important to mention, now that you guys are familiar with prefabs, you can tell that we're actually just scratching the surface here for these features because the map itself, just like when you change the type font, like I said in Photoshop, when you're typing something in there, you should be able here to switch between cities all over the world. You should be able to drag and drop a route prefab with a point A and point B. And so that would give you full control if you want the vehicle to start, let's say, at this building and then uh, destination would be this building. You can add multiple destinations to make the, the the case is super complex. So that would allow you to customize all that with no development support just by clicking and dragging those prefabs inside your project. That's actually how I did it. So if I rewind, then the next thing I wanna show you guys, is, so let me expand the map prefab. As you can see, I just did the same thing as we did in the situation awareness. So I was just a collection of some of these prefabs that I was able to put uh, to put this together. And we're crashing, okay. I have an extra scene here open for us. Are you guys still with me? Yeah, we can still hear you oh, fine. Okay, okay, great, all right, we're moving along. Okay, so <laughs> let me bring that guy again. Yeah, I, I, as you guys can see, I have a bunch of uh, uh, projects open at the same time, so my computer is complaining a little bit, but we can move along. Okay, I'm bringing the scene back. And uh, the next thing I wanna show you guys are the triggers, uh, which is a really, really great feature uh, that we added to the project, made my life way easier. So if I expand and click on the navigation, I'll scroll down on the properties and click on show triggers. Triggers are these uh, orange diamonds that you guys can see along the route. And the way they're used is, now that you guys are already familiar with the animation, the two things that I wanna show you guys are clips, which are this blue box here, Oops. And the triggers, which are the, the orange diamonds that you guys can see. And the way they uh, interact with each other is you create the animation for the elements we want in the timeline. You add a clip just by selecting the group and then you can add a clip uh, as you can see in the properties. And the clips, which are these blue blocks, it, they uh, actually determine what part of the animation that's gonna be played in that specific trigger. So I created a clip I can link the triggers you guys can see here, trigger color. That's why when I click on the on, on the um, on the clip, you guys saw that the map changing color. Um, so the, what I'm saying is, whenever the vehicle reaches the trigger color, play this clip here that is linked to that trigger. That's super useful because everything we, we got to the conclusion that lots of things that we're doing here is route centric. So if you can add uh, triggers or uh, activation points along the route to say that I want this animation to happen at this intersection, that made our life way easier. So if I rewind and hit play, um, let me select the actual group that you guys are gonna be seeing the animation from. Um, and then if, so if I rewind and hit play, you, you guys are gonna see that when the vehicle crosses the first trigger, it's gonna show, you, show us the first animation that I set up. It doesn't make, really sense, but that, that's just to prove a point for you guys that we can easily set up animations and link that to parts in the in the route. Um, and then the next one I wanna show, so let me hit play and keep going. As soon as the vehicle crosses the next, next trigger, it's gonna give us a POI, great feature. It's another prefab that I have in the project. So let me hit pause. POIs are down here. If I open them, you can see that I have actually two clips for the same POI, each clip is linked to a different trigger. So you can see that the possibilities here are endless. We can have multiple clips linked to a same trigger um, and create lots of things. I'll show you at the end, like the final projects that we worked on using these features, we can really create a lot. So if I select the POI, as you see, I have some animation set. We have the arrow that we can change the color, which is this little arrow here. I'll hit play so you guys can see it, it, it changing color. We can change the text, just, just like we do in uh, other uh, uh, design tools, uh, super uh, 
standard. You can change the label that it's written down here. Animate color, we can change the, even animate the arrow. As you can see, I hope you guys can see that the arrow is bouncing a little bit. You can make that bouncing even more. I mean, you get the idea that the sky is doing it. So uh, I'll hit it back to zero because I don't want it to see it bouncing for this demonstration. And then when I hit play, you guys are actually gonna see so here the map, so what happened here is actually, I had three animations linked to the same trigger. I had the POI changing color, the arrow changed color, I had the map changing color, and I had the background changing color. And that's really only using this feature, like I said, everything here is just scratching the surface of, given the possibilities that we have. And using this limited set of features, I was able to implement what I'm gonna show you guys. Um, so, uh, so you can get the idea that it's actually uh, no big deal for designers to be able to set this up using the features that we just showed you. So this is a final project. That's the one that you guys have seen around. Uh, you guys can see that the layout can get a little more complex. Uh, I have pretty much here, I used the same workflow as you guys seen before, uh, just dragging and dropping prefabs and everything. Uh, so if, when I hit play, so what's happening here, if I expand the navigation, select navigation, I'll scroll down and hit show triggers. You guys can see that everything that I'm animating here, I'm using clips, linking clips to triggers, dragging and drop prefabs inside the layout and doing so. You can see a car just showed up here on the essay with a rudder that was all customized by me. Um, same thing here for the media mode. That's all, all that animation I set up based on the trigger. So whenever the vehicle crosses a trigger, play this clip, when it, the vehicle just crossed that trigger, the camera pulled back and animated all this based on those triggers too. So, I mean, you can get the idea from here. And then you can see that the camera is gonna cross this trigger and all, the camera animation uh, is pulled back. The uh, POI showed up again, everything based on the triggers animation. So you get the idea, I'll leave it running a little more. You can see the rain prefab is super subtle because we don't want this to become a focal point. But that's another prefab. You can add weather prefab to your map. Um, animate the clouds as we did here. Now it's showing you an alternate route because there's an accident on the road. So it gives you a second option as a route. The, uh, the driver uh, approved and then the route redrew. That's kind of a story that we drew for this use case. Um, so, so people can move along and try to create kind of a real scenario of what would happen if you drive to point A to point B. You can be running out of gas. There could be an accident on, on the on the an accident on the way. So, I think that's it for the demonstration. We're gonna switch to the night mode right now, and then I'm gonna leave it at that because it's there. We go. It's looking cool. All right. And that was it. Hope you guys can get the idea of what we came up with. Super strong, promising feature. Um, it, they were barely just scratching the surface with. And then I think now I'm gonna hand it back to Michael Limber. Thanks, Pedro. I'll just wrap it up. <clears throat> awesome. So thank you very much for that demo. Um, here we go, I'm back. And uh, we'll just wrap this up here. So. Uh, clearly, that's the, we've we've just sort of scratched the surface. This was a very small uh, crew. <clears throat> There's just one developer, and uh, Pedro is a designer, uh, and the two of them, you know, pretty much made this whole thing in in uh, a few months. So um, we, you know, our our next steps really are obviously what we're doing right now is to engage with a wider design community and find out if <clears throat> something like this and this kind of a workflow uh, is appealing. Obviously, we're doing things not hooked up to vehicles just yet, but I think that that this shows that there's lots of hooks in, uh, especially for concepting. Um, but I think if you implemented this fully, um, that's the next thing. So um, the next step, of course, also is uh, robust integration with target hardware, which uh, we have an Android build of this running, works great. And the idea is that you may have uh, connected interfaces for tools when you're doing you know, cockpit design. Uh, and then also the app is running quite very performantly on the Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, 8155. So um, that's a sort of you know further refinement obviously is is expected on those those fronts. But um, in a very short time, the team was able to build an app, mock up these these uh, scenarios, and um, <clears throat> and you know, pre prepare this demo. So 
obviously another next step is to develop SDKs so that we make it easy for Unity uh, community to access the here platform location data. Um, that's those discussions are kind of underway and some of the work's being happening. And uh, we really, really hope to continue this amazing collaboration with Unity. Um, it's a great combination. Uh, the power of a game engine and the power of a location platform together uh, really tick a lot of the boxes in what's required for uh, HMI development. So uh, I think with that, I'm handing it back to, uh, well, it's actually for questions now. So uh, I'll leave this, this screen up. Uh, and thank you all very, very much for, um, for your time today. So um, I'll hand it over to uh, who's going next. Yep. I guess we're all here for questions. Yeah, I think that that's great. I mean, um, thanks, Michael, Derek, Pedro, and, and welcome as well to to Brad. And what a, a fantastic insight there, showing the, the possibilities of, of of this and what you've managed to achieve just in such a short time is 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 remarkable. We, we've had some questions through from the audience, um, which we, we we've got about fifteen minutes. We can go through, but let's just start. I'd like to start, what, what do you see as the advantages that this collaboration offers and this system offers over existing uh, dedicated HMI design applications? I mean, I think, I think well, you know, we cover a little bit of that, but I think uh, what I've noticed is that there are definitely some companies that, that have been doing this for a, a few years and, and they're involved with, with uh, different, uh, different companies, but I think the, it's the integration of an engine and a map. Uh, and I think in HMI land that uh, makes the possibilities. We chose this very large screen uh, as our first demo uh, to show that if an autonomous vehicle, you can have the map as part of the a part of the user experience. And so um, I think uh, it's something that all companies have to deal with, but generally they have to deal with lots of parts. And hopefully this reduces the amount of parts and increases the creativity. Great. I want to turn to one of the audience questions here, and and, and this is. Partly answered, I think, but good to address. Are basic interactions built into Unity, such as button press, swipe, pinch to zoom, for example, or do you need to code these in? I'll bring in Yao for that. Uh, Yao Zai is our uh, product manager for HMI. Um, he's got a lot of hands-on experience working in the engine, uh, and, and he can explain the nuance there. Yao, are you on the line? Uh, yes, yeah, hey. thank you very much for the question. So. Uh, yeah, so with, uh, with the default Unity editor, so uh, those uh, uh, actions and in, in interactive uh, designs can be done very easily. So um, uh, yeah, so there's no need to uh, uh, to do anything special, uh, in fact. And uh, uh, where there's uh, uh, you know features in development today that uh, you know that uh, going forward we are going to make it even more uh, uh, comfortable for any designers. Uh, so stay tuned. Absolutely. Okay, great. Another question here. I mean, you built this, what well, you've shown us already in such a, a quick time, but you know, give us a sense of how, how difficult, how challenging it is to reconfigure Unity uh, to accommodate um, HDMI design workflows. And take that, Brad. Right. Well, I, you know, so Michael conceived of the approach, which was to, uh, you know, start with a user experience first, in a sense, build a uh, user interface around uh, the requirements of putting together a uh, uh, the UI components uh, with respect to what a designer workflow might look like. So uh, we had, a, you know, a fairly strict, uh, you know, UI layout and design that we then sort of implemented. And, and so for the most part, it was a matter of building a bridge between Unity and the application that incorporated enough tooling with the uh, widgets and controls and uh, interfaces to allow uh, uh, you know, us to tr iterate and to try straight up pure animation, trigger-based animation, uh, integrating simulation, and uh, you know, trying to handle um, what we would see as a next step, which is to integrate into a real, a real car environment. Uh, with uh, uh, listening to uh, topics and events and, and information within the car and try to pull it all together. Uh, so we really want to do end to end and we're, we're getting very close, uh, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an iterative process, I think, working with the designers and engineers to pull it off. Absolutely, that might be um, an interesting point 
to go on to another audience question or comment really and brad you might want to answer this but obviously open to the panel i can the the, the audience writes i can see how this tool is useful for creating demos with 3d content uh, can you give some examples of use cases in vehicles where this where this would be useful so benefits for end users drivers and passengers for example uh, I'll launch into it quickly. So we sort of have a scenario engine that is handling many different use cases. This is one, uh, which is sort of, uh, or, or I should say, it's a, it, this is a few of them. The core, of course, is navigation and, uh, and trying to make it immersive on a large screen with uh, uh, the new uh, you know, automobile HMI as a mobility platform that can uh, you know, do everything the infotainment should be able to do and more. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think it's it's just a really uh, uh, it, it's it's really important to, uh, to 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 leverage the power of Unity uh, to to reach the target hardware and then to uh, uh, allow for uh, you know uh, watching designers work and 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 making sure that uh, uh, it's as efficient as possible. Yeah, and I think I, I just add to that a little bit. That I think we obviously scratch the surface, and I'm sure real. Uh, people who spend their lives just doing actual vehicle implementations will probably look at what our solution and go, wow, you, you, you know, the, the, the Highway uh, Safety Administration is not going to approve that one, you know. So <laughs> um, I think that we we had the chance on kind of a whiteboard just to kind of, you know, dream the blue sky about this. Uh, and clearly a real implementation will be constrained by a lot more factors. But I do think this helps us to show the potential. And I think as cars become more autonomous, those kind of tight constraints and restrictions may get wide. You know, if your car is driving itself, uh, probably the what what can be on screen is a lot more uh, lenient. So, um, and our view is that uh, the map can be used as ambience. Uh, it's not just for navigation. At some point, you don't really need a map because the car knows where it's going. It's really just kind of a are we there yet map. Um, and in fact, you can use the map as beauty and just make it very very subtle. And especially like in the parked mode, where we actually can just diminish the city map but still leave the skyline. So I think it just offers a lot of creativity. Clearly we have not solved the get it into a real car problem yet, but uh, we <laughs> yeah, think it's so, solvable for sure. Yeah, so let, let, let me add on, on, on top of that. So um, uh, so for, for getting integrated in vehicles, in fact, we, uh, you know, Unity, as, uh, as you may know, have covered uh, so many uh, mobile platforms uh, and then, you know, we've extended our coverage to support uh, Yocto Linux and, uh, and QNX and Android Automotive. So from that perspective, uh, a, a runtime of, uh, you know, uh, of Unity can be uh, deployed very, uh, you know, kind of easily and directly to uh, just like you deploy to an Android phone. Uh, um, and then uh, we have uh, uh, entitled packages, which uh, currently, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, is uh, only available to uh, automotive customers uh, right now to um, easily uh, have data bindings uh, from uh, the, uh, for example, the Yocto Linux uh, HAL layer or um, the uh, Android Automotive data binding uh, APIs and, and the SDKs released by Google. Uh, so we can easily hook up those buses, uh, you know, can lean and uh, and uh, you know any vehicle bus communication uh, mechanisms to the runtime, so it becomes much easier to do so. Um, yeah, so I will just uh, uh, just a little bit addition to what Michael and uh, yeah. Brad said. Yeah. Excellent. And now you you talked a bit about about VR, and there's a question here um, asking about the integration of the tool with VR, and, and actually mentions. The, the audience member says they have a new interior design, for example, they want to test screen interactions and see all that in VR. So maybe you guys can give yeah. us some insight on how that would integrate. Yeah, I think I, I'll take that question. Uh, the uh, 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 VR and XR uh, applications, as you may know, um, is a strong point for Unity. Um, so we uh, basically, uh, last time I checked, uh, more than 70%, I would say, uh, of the AR applica uh, XR applications uh, are, are built with Unity and uh, uh, even more numbers of studios uh, are using Unity to develop the, uh, the AR VR contents. So 
from that perspective, uh, definitely this is possible, and not only possible, this is made uh, a lot easier for collaboration uh, with uh, uh, device OEMs such as uh, uh, Microsoft and uh, Facebook, um, and uh, we have the uh, SDKs available for all of those devices, HoloLens, for example, Vive, and uh, you know, and uh, you know those other AR VR devices. So um, we we have not done, uh, and currently it's underway by a, a partner, um, a tier one partner that is doing the uh, XR uh, head-up display. Um, uh, that requires a lot more uh, collaboration. Uh, with uh, with the tier ones and also with uh, um, uh, GS system vendor like here uh, to align the uh, the navigation the map and uh, and there's uh, you know a few things I think a few tricks that needs to be done for uh, extra hard and I don't know if uh, my, uh, you know Michael or or Brad or uh, Pedro yeah let me let me just jump in because I think that uh, that we've identified a really a killer app a, a use case for vr which is interior car design and it goes beyond just this wide screen it's everything all the full interior with lighting that is responsive and part of the experience including the windows windows are just more screens that might have heads-up displays and might have sun blocking li liquid crystals and maybe completely blocked out for just an interior experience so i think the whole the, you know vr is probably the killer design tool you want to you want to move towards and we're fully supportive of getting this our component in with a the windshield experience and everything else uh yeah it needs to be done by a designer completely integrated absolutely great well we're, we're down to the last couple of minutes but maybe maybe perhaps a, a concluding question here is really where you see the opportunities of the here 3d map in unity what's the next stage of opportunities that bringing that into this offer yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of more than the, just the 3D map. I mean, here has a whole uh, location platform. So there's services like traffic and uh, all the POIs and, and analytics. And, and uh, so I think that in general, the, we look at the 3D map as a canvas layer. Um, and really with something like Unity as your paintbrushes and palette, you can paint a lot of things on there. So I think maps have traditionally been this very static kind of the map and the route, and clearly there's there's information reasons why that's a good idea. But I do think that you can, uh, the, the here 3D content is indexed, so every building is a unique object, everything on this, everything in the map can be addressed individually. And with something like Unity, that means it can be styled uniquely. Um, so I think there's a lot of uh, look and feel and interaction with maps that we've just never seen before. And I think Unity really makes that possible to maximize the, the product offerings that here has. So I think, the the combination i think is the really the magic sauce which is just that that to have an index map and a game engine together um you know there's a lot of things we've never seen so it's a really exciting time i mean the car the ultimate mobile device right so <laughs> absolutely well it, well it it is a great match and i think bringing this together with with vr as we talked about these possibilities interior design is it's it's really um fantastic um opportunities ahead we're really Great to have gotten this insight from all of you. Uh, we're coming up on the hour here. There's a few more questions that, that we didn't get to, but we'll certainly share that with the team and have the opportunity for you to follow up uh, as you like individually. And we'll have more content on this, of course, as well on CDN. This webinar will be available, as I mentioned earlier, on demand um, uh, you know, within 24 hours. So, so anyone who wants to go back and get more insight, the guys' contact details were there too. Um, Thanks again, Michael. Thanks, Derek, Pedro, Brad, and and the and the team supporting behind um, for, for 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 sharing all of this. We're really excited to see what comes next. Thank you for your time. All right. Really appreciate. Thanks, it. everyone. Thanks, bye -bye. everyone. Bye bye. All right. Bye bye. bye, -bye.